on CW18 starts now. Right now at 10, captured. A man wanted for allegedly raping a woman near downtown Orlando has been arrested. We have the brand new details. But first, we begin with your commitment 2018, 2019 results. The polls are closed and some key local races have been decided. Good evening, I'm Stuart Moore. And I'm Michelle Imperato. Let's start out with the race for Orlando Mayor, where Buddy Dyer is the projected winner tonight, now heading into his sixth term in office. West Jews' Gail Pascal brown is live at Dyer's watch party downtown. Gail. Yeah, the mayor just left, but as you can see, a few of his supporters are still here. With just under 12% of voter turnout, Buddy Dyer took this election by 72% over his opponents, Sam Ings and Aretha Simons. Everybody was rocking here at the Abbey. How happy are you? <laughs> I'm the happiest mayor in America, and I'm even happier tonight. <laughs> Buddy Dyer. That's because Orlando voters have spoken. Just 30 minutes after the polls closed, Buddy Dyer picked up his sixth term as mayor, defeating Orlando City Commissioner Sam Ings and businesswoman Aretha Simons. For 16 years, Buddy Dyer has led the city beautiful, and Tuesday, he won reportedly his widest margin of victory yet, 72%. So a couple of people said 16 years were too much. <laughs> but it turns out we're not done yet. Supporters are excited. Very exciting. Obviously, he's a visionary who has always looked to see not only what's in the best interest for the city of Orlando, but Central Florida as a whole. So being part of that, working for a leader like that, of course, is very exciting. Throughout the city, he's been a visionary for now almost 16 years, and now we have another four years. I'm just looking forward to the next four years under Mayor Dyer's leadership. And Dyer says there's still much to do. We want to get Sunrail to the airport. We want to get Creative Village more than phase one. We want to finish the Dr. Phillips Center. We want to work on affordable housing. From City Hall to Capitol Hill, Mayor Buddy Dyer has lots of supporters tonight. U.S. Representative Val Deming served as police chief under Mayor Buddy Dyer. She says voters sent a resounding message Tuesday. I just think it's a testament to the kind of person that he is, that he represents every community, and obviously the community wants to see four more years. Now, Buddy Dyer says that residents in Orlando have spoken very loudly and clearly, and he is just so humbled by the margin of victory tonight. I'm Gail Pascal brown reporting live from downtown Orlando for West 2 News. All right, Gail, thank you. And West 2 was at City Commissioner and Challenger Sam Ings watch party. After tonight's results came in, he told us he has nothing but gratitude for his supporters and didn't quite close the door on another mayoral run. As I finish out my term, I have done my service to the city of Orlando. And we'll see what happens next. Maybe there's another run for mayor again of the city of Orlando. Meanwhile, the battle to fill Ng's vacant seat isn't over just yet. Neither candidate surpassed the required 50% plus one threshold to be declared the winner. Now, the leading candidate, Bakari Burns, only got 46% of the vote, leading Gary Siplin by a little more than 200 votes. But I feel good. I'm encouraged. I, uh, the support has been tremendous. Uh, so I'm ready to work for these next 30 days to bring it home. The winner will be determined in a runoff election set for December 3rd. Now, among the many local races tonight, Megan Sladek appears poised to become Oviedo's next mayor. With all precincts reporting, she has 44% of the vote over challengers Randy Corr and Emma Reichart. And another mayoral race to tell you about, this one in Mount Dora, where Kathy Hoax ended up with 59% of the vote over the incumbent Nick Jerome with just 41%. And in Tavares, voters overwhelmingly voted against a $27 million bond issue to build a performing arts center. 87% voted no. Now, we we have all of today's results posted for you right now inside West.com. You'll also be able to see them over on the free West 2 News mobile app. All right, it's time now to turn to your first alert forecast. And we saw more rain again today, warm, humid. That's right. Chief Meteorologist Tony Minoffi joins us now. Tony, are those clouds going to stick around for tomorrow morning, too? You know, they are, especially along the coast. We had some thunderstorms in and around downtown Orlando. A lot of folks coming in from their dinner breaks talking about that. Those showers and storms have wound down. 75 degrees out there right now. A little trough of low pressure off to our west. The front is kind of uh, holding up there into uh, the state of Georgia. It's not going to make it in here tonight or tomorrow. And we do have some 
offshore thunderstorms over the Gulf Stream waters, but you can see the showers here through Osceola County. The turnpike roads there are a little bit wet. Uh, the weather has kind of calmed down here over Orange County, Marion County, Onondaga Brevard County, northward into uh, Ormond Beach, into Volusia County, and Flagler County, also pretty quiet outside for the time being. No, notice the temperature here in Melbourne, 77 degrees, a little bit on the warm side. Uh, Palm Coast at 70, and Ocala right around 73. When we take a look at future cast, clouds and showers will once again redevelop along the coast towards daybreak. I'll continue to track these throughout the afternoon for you hour by hour. I'll let you know where those afternoon thunderstorms are likely to set up. Guys, back to you. Tony, thank you. Happening now, investigators are out at the scene of a car into a pond. This is all happening along State Road 414 and Orange Blossom Trail. When our crew arrived, we saw first responders searching the pond, and within the past hour, that car was towed out of the water. Of course, stay with West U News as we learn any new details. New tonight, a man has died after a weekend shooting. He's been identified as 42-year-old George Dyson. Orange County deputies say they found him shot at the Katarina Hotel on Lee Road Saturday and rushed him to the hospital. They told us he succumbed to his injuries on Sunday. It is unclear if police have a suspect. A man wanted for allegedly raping a woman near downtown Orlando is in custody tonight. Investigators say they found James Kalist in South Florida. The arrest comes three days after police released his picture and asked the public for information. West Chew's Chris Guardaro is in the neighborhood where the crime took place with the latest details on this investigation. People living in this Thornton Park neighborhood say they're relieved to hear that law enforcement has caught a suspect connected to an alleged rape that happened in this normally quiet area. Orlando police announced Tuesday 36-year-old James Calixt was arrested by U.S. Marshals in the West Palm Beach area. Calixt is accused of grabbing a woman who was in front of her home on East Jefferson Street, forcing her to the side of her house and sexually battering her. This alleged rape happened on October 26th. After the attack, West News spoke to a woman named Cassidy Temple who lives nearby, and she told us she's changing how she walks around her neighborhood. This is what she said after hearing about Calixt's arrest on Tuesday. Very relieved. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised to find out it was so far away, but I'm glad that all law enforcement worked together, and I'm glad he's not here anymore. Orlando police released a picture of Kalixt on Saturday. They named him a suspect in the case and said he should be considered extremely dangerous. He was reportedly put on probation just one day prior to the attack. If he was able to do this one day after being placed on probation, we suspect that he may be inclined to commit something like that or commit this type of crime again. The Orlando Police Department is expected to have a press conference Wednesday morning to give more details about Kalik's arrest. We're expecting to find out how U.S. Marshals found him then. In Orlando, Chris Guardaro, WESH 2 News. Tonight, investigators still have not found a man in Altamont Springs, last seen taking off from a stolen car and then jumping into a retention pond. This has been unfolding for the last 24 hours now. Last night, officers were called to a Wawa on 436 after getting a call about that stolen vehicle. It tells us the driver ran off into a fenced area, jumped into the water. He was last seen struggling to remain afloat. Officers say two other suspects in that car also got away. Palm Bay police say a deadly double shooting early today near Northview Street may be the result of two men shooting each other. Neighbors reported hearing several gunshots and officers found 21-year-old Jalen DaCosta of Jacksonville and 23-year-old Jerome Harris of Palm Bay dead. Police believe the two shot it out over a drug deal. We know enough now to say that we suspect that these two victims shot at each other and subsequently uh, both sustained uh, fatal injuries. Police say there is one more person of interest that they're looking for in Jacksonville, but there is no more local threat. A few miles away, another deadly shooting in Palm Bay, and investigators are working to figure out what happened. The man's body was found inside of a car on Agora Circle around 2.30 this morning. They say a check of security cameras in the area led them to believe that the shooting really happened a little after 1 o'clock. There was still a major police presence once the sun came up. Your kid sees a bunch of cops and crime scene vans around because they had two right here. It's not <laughs> what you want to see early in the morning. Late in the afternoon, uh, this silver Hummer that you see here was found near Palm Bay Elementary. Three people inside all ran off, so the school is locked down. The Hummer belongs to the man who was shot to death on Agora Circle. All three were later taken into custody, and the lockdown was lifted. They are being called persons of interest. A man is under arrest, accused of groping a Disney cast member. 
51 year old Brian Sherman was arrested Saturday in Orange County. A victim claims she sat down with the man to take a picture near the grotto area of the Magic Kingdom when he groped her. Sherman was arrested immediately. Federal investigators say Universal Orlando will not be cited for electrical problems that led to lifeguards getting shocked at the Volcano Bay water park. OSHA says the resort was not aware something was wrong. Woman was injured after feeling an electric shock last June. Five lifeguards were also taken to a hospital for observation after feeling tingling in the water. That's going to say electrical wiring damaged during construction caused those shocks. Universal says the problem has been resolved. In Ocala, deputies say they've arrested and stopped a man who was planning to set local businesses on fire. Tommy Holt was picked up by Marion County deputies after they say he was found carrying around a box with Molotov cocktails inside. Witnesses say that the box was actually lit on fire at one point. Deputies responded and say that Holt resisted arrest. He's being held on $20,000 bond tonight. Detectives have not said why he was targeting that business. It's a real thing. Video game addiction and some doctors say it goes much deeper than the surface games are you know they suck in tonight West 2 looks into how parents can tell if it's an addiction and how you can make yourself a better example